Welcome! In this series of short videos, we will give an introduction to those who have never used Power Basic before, or even considered taking up programming. Today we will look at investigating and fixing an issue with an application. So how do you investigate an issue? When one of your users reports that they have an issue with one of your applications that has impacted their service, how do you investigate it? So what are the stages to investigate? If this is a known issue, there may be a documented workaround for the user, while you or your team put a permanent fix in place. Is this a new issue? If this type of issue has never been seen before, it will require some detailed investigation, which may be handed off to other support staff. Replication. Can you replicate the issue in your test environment? Is it a data or a code issue? What needs to change? Is the issue being caused by rogue data in your system? Or is it something in the code that just does not work correctly? So in order to explore this concept further, we're going to look at a real issue that has been reported and how we go about fixing it. This is a website on which we publish a list of all the videos we have created. Some of these videos have source code, and this is where our particular issue lies. On this page we have a list of all the videos we have released in the last month. There are a number of links to where the source code lies. There is a GitHub link, there is a zip files download link, and there is a view of the source link. If we have a look at the view of the source, this shows you colour coded a list of the software that's actually being discussed within that particular video. And in a vast number of cases, this is displaying correctly. It shows you exactly what you would see within the PowerBasic, Windows or console compilers. So what's the issue our users are actually having? If we have a look at the by keyword and go down to the bottom of the list, there are a number of videos on web software. If we have a look at one of these, we'll see our software list comes up on the screen quite happily. However, if we scroll down slightly, we'll see there comes a point where the formatting of the source code is not displaying correctly. This is the issue our user is actually having. Let's compare this with the actual source code to see what the difference is. This particular function, create web page, has the problem well shown. If we go back to our sample code page and we look at the GitHub link for that. If we scroll down to we find that function, we'll see there is our create web page function. It's a very small function whose sole task in life is to return a piece of HTML. This is an HTML document, starting with the HTML tag and finishing with the closing tag. If we compare that against what we're showing on screen, this is where the source of our error is actually appearing. These HTML listings of the PowerBasic code are produced by a web coder DLL. As a developer, you should be familiar with your own software. Or if it is software that's been written by somebody else, you would hope that they have actually documented how the software actually operates, what dependencies it has, and how the code actually works. So we can see that this particular function is not being displayed correctly by WebCoder. The problem in this case is fairly obvious to a programmer. Our code here has embedded HTML, and the WebCoder DLL is turning this text into HTML. So it's obviously not handling embedded HTML. 
so we're going to have a look at the Web Coder DLL to see how it functions. But before we do that, we're going to have a look to see how this website is actually maintained. The website is formed of a number of static HTML pages. The data for this is held within a Microsoft SQL Server Express database and is generated using Power Basic applications. This is the application that maintains our website. It basically has a list of all the videos we have created with details of the created date, the subject, the description, and all the links. This is a Power Basic Windows application. The data, as you can see on screen, is held in a grid. This is the My Little Grid, a third party free tool you can use to add grids to your Power Basic Windows applications. The data on screen is coming from a SQL Express Microsoft SQL Server database. Once we have added or amended a video, we can then regenerate the entire website by clicking on the Publish button. The Publish button is kicking off a Power Basic console application. This console application has the task of generating all the HTML files that can then be uploaded to the website. It only takes a few seconds to run and generates the files quite nicely. If we look slightly to the right, we will see the source column which contains the path and the name of the source file we want the webcoder DLL to interpret. The webcoder DLL takes a single parameter which is this path and name of the source file. It then reads that in into a single variable and converts it to an HTML document. This is where our problem appears to be occurring. So let's have a look at the source code of the webcoder DLL. This is the webcoder DLL. As I said, this takes a string which is the content of our source code and turns it into an HTML document you can then publish onto the website. It has a number of functions and the one we're going to have a look at is the basic to syntax call HTML. If we look further down, we'll see how it handles the open and closed angled brackets. In this case, there's a replace which replaces the open angle bracket with the open angle bracket. So this in effect at the moment is doing absolutely nothing. We need to amend this to change it to something that the web page can handle much easier. So since the code at the moment is making no attempt to handle greater than or less than signs, we need to actually amend this so that the HTML will not interpret these angle brackets as being part of HTML. So we will replace this line of code with two lines of code, one to handle the open bracket and one to handle the closed bracket. We are replacing it with this ampersand LT and the ampersand GT. These codes are handled within HTML as pure text. So if we save and recompile our DLL, And there is a new webcoder DLL. We need to take a copy of this and put it into the live location so that when we run our console application again, it will be using the new DLL. And there is our file now having been updated. Now all we have to do is to regenerate our website. So having updated the webcoder.dll, all we need to do now is to republish the entire website. This will sweep through the SQL Server database and recompile the HTML files. And that's it completed. So if we have a look now at the website itself, this will be our local website. So now we are on our own local website. So let's look again at one of the web projects. And there is a development for. And if we click on the link and scroll down, we will now see that the create web page is correctly formatting the HTML. It's displaying as it would display 
within the console or Windows compilers. So we have successfully identified the issue that has been reported. We have narrowed down where in the code the problem is occurring. We've made an amendment to the code and plugged it back in to our application and rerun it to regenerate our files. All we need to do now is to upload our updated website back up to the real online website. So in summary, when you have an issue reported, the first thing you need to do is to check to see whether you can replicate the issue. If you can replicate the issue and the issue is affecting more than one person, it may be something you have to fix fairly quickly. Having either documentation or a very good knowledge of the application is always a bonus in this case. So once you have identified the source of the problem and corrected it, you can then retest your application. This should involve making sure that the fault that the user has reported is no longer there, plus ensuring that you have not inserted a new issue or issues into your application by fixing the one the user has reported. So you should always do a regression test to make sure everything else in your application still functions properly. And having passed all those tests, you're then safe to roll your application out to the production environment. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching.